thanks for dropping in. In this video, my brain struggles to work out what to do with a screwdriver when there are no screws. I discover that staring at circuit boards gets me excited in a number of ways, and I run a bunch of speed tests on an SSD. SSDs have become incredibly cheap these days. On the one hand, given that they have a finite number of write cycles, they could almost be considered as a consumable. However, this low price has been achieved by a change in NAND chip technology, with today's cheapest consumer SSDs using QLC NAND or quad layer cells, where each cell contains four bits of data, and the whole cell has to be rewritten when any of this data changes. This means that while being higher density capacity and so cheaper to produce, the NAND cannot be rewritten as many times as earlier TLC, triple layer, MLC, dual layer, or SLC, single layer NAND. I'll leave a link to where I did a more in-depth video on SSD technology here. Looking at Amazon the other day, I came across this MSI Spatium S270 240 gigabyte drive. They are SATA 3, 2.5 inch drives, and they had them on offer for 11 pounds 99p here in the UK. Now, for a 240 gigabyte drive, this would be cheap even for a no brand generic one, let alone a known brand like MSI. Now, realistically, MSI are not really known for their SSDs. They're known more for motherboards and laptops. However, in these laptops and indeed pre-built PCs, which they also make, they're going to need SSDs. And in their laptops and pre-builds, I figured they'd want them to be relatively reliable. So let's take a look at the specifications. So they have a Fizen S11 controller, an older but known controller. Now it just states 3D NAND as the type of NAND chip, which can really mean MLC, TLC or QLC. So we'll open it up in a bit and see if we can work out which it is. As mentioned, it's a 2.5 inch drive supporting SATA 3, as well as the earlier 2 and 1 specifications. It can sequentially read up to 500 megabytes per second and write 400 megabytes per second sequentially. We'll check that out as well shortly. Now of particular interest is a terabytes written or TBW rating, which is 110. This is quite high for a budget drive. Most other 240 gigabyte drives I have, which are all consumer drives, have a TBW rating of 50 to 80. And the fact that the warranty period is also for five years, or the TBW limit, whichever is reached first, is quite phenomenal for what is, remember, a drive I bought for £11.99p. So, first impressions. It comes in an actual box, more in line with higher end drives, as again, the drives I usually get come in plastic clamshells only. The box has the usual part numbers and serial numbers on the back, Opening up the box and the drive itself is held in a plastic tray. There's also an EU regulatory notice leaflet and a paper instruction manual in multiple languages. Taking the drive out, it is in a plastic case, no metal here at this price point, but it looks quite solid. After plugging it into my test bench and getting the system to find it, by creating and formatting a partition in Windows, control panel, and assigning a drive letter, we can see it all looks fine in Crystal Disk Info, with the usual smart info being displayed. Using Crystal Disk Mark, we do get the 500 megabytes per second read on sequential reads, and 400 megabytes per second on sequential writes, albeit only when 8 bits are queued. It's a bit slow when this is done in linear mode in the Q1-T1 test, and you can see how this compares to the data from a crucial MX drive, which is considered to be a very good consumer grade drive. Now to have a look at what NAND make and model these are using. So much for the five year warranty I'm about to invalidate in the name of science. As the case is clipped together, there are no screws. It took a little while to find out the best place to put the screwdriver to prise it open. It was definitely more firmly clipped together than other drives I've come across. Once removed, we can see the circuit board only takes up a small fraction of the 2.5 inch drive area, which is usual for these lower capacity drives these days, which don't need many NAND chips, particularly when using the cheaper TLC or QLC with higher capacity chips. On the front of the board, there seems to be the controller chip, and one NAND chip and another NAND on the reverse. I Meaning each of these NAND chips are probably 128 gigabytes, making the 240 gigabyte drive with some redundancy. Zooming in, we can see we do have a Fizen controller chip with the markings PS3117-S17-39VE2307E. 
Flipping the board over, we can read off the NAND chips. Surprisingly, it isn't using chips that are obviously branded by one of the main manufacturers, which is a bit surprising as you'd think MSI wouldn't use a no-name chip. However, the code on the chip, HA5AG93BXA-D2434, will not be able to find out any info on these chips. So if you have any insights, please leave a comment below. I assume they are QLC chips, but I guess they could be TLC given the higher TBW rating. So there we have it what seems to be a great value SSD at 1199 I can't comment on the longevity, whether it can in fact last its 5 years or 110 TBW, but I'll let you know how it goes. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and leave any comments below. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.